Hello, hello, ladies and gentlemen. I am here joined by the one, the only, looking like my grandson, my dad, the great <laughs> Mr. Les Brown. How are you today, Dad? I'm better than good, better than most, and sometimes even better than that. <laughs> because we're going to New York. New York, New York, here we come. Yes, Saturday, August the 14th, we're doing an event there called Hungry for Greatness. If you're ready to reach your goals, if you're ready to learn strategies on who you have to be in and out of the pandemic and how to begin to turn the adversities in your life to your advantage, oh, this is the place to be. This is the place to be. And can I say something that? Yes. Post-pandemic Les Brown is different than pre-pandemic Les Brown. Oh, without any question. You have transformed. And you know what has happened? Your heart has grown bigger. How does that happen? I don't know. That's you, you can't see the picture when you're in the frame, so I have to leave that assessment to those of you who watch me. <laughs> well, let me see what I noticed about you yeah. during the pandemic. And let me say, I want to give a shout out to Pastor Marty mm -hmm. and, and her wonderful husband and Pastor Lydia and her wonderful husband and Abraham. They're hosting us at the Rock Church in hey, Queens. Queen. Yes, and, and it's going to be an experience. It's a Saturday, and we have speakers that we have trained. I have to stop you there. I'm trying to give a shout-out to you. Can I finish, please? Yes, sir. Thank you very much. This is what happens when you work with your family. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, we fire each other all the time. <laughs> There are people tuned in from all around the world to watch you. Yes. And many of them will never get to know you like I do. Yes. What would you say is the, the first step when coming out of this pandemic, knowing the times that we are in, mm -hmm. that people need to do if they're, if they're hungry for greatness, if they want to pull out their greatness? What would you say is the first step? The first step is becoming clear of what it is that you want and holding a vision of that tenaciously because there's so many distractions out there. This is called the, the, the distraction economy. But when you think about it, we've dealt with the pandemic. We're dealing with the Delta virus. And then before we can get our minds around that, the Lambda virus. And now there's another virus called the monkeypox, all right? Now, next thing they're going to have is the roach virus. <laughs> when I grew up, they had chicken pox. Yeah. Now they got monkey pox. They got monkey pox, <laughs> and a roach virus is on the horizon. Come on! Come on! <laughs> we have to have something. It's going to be informative. It's going to educate you. It's going to empower you. You're going to, you're going to be exposed to people that are going in the direction of where you're going. This is the time you want to keep social distancing from people who don't have goals and dreams. Yes. So let's do this. Let's give them a little taste of what they're going to get when they come to our event. Once again, August 14th, live in New York City for the first time since the pandemic, you get to see the one, the only, the master motivator, Mr. Les Brown. Let's let's just do our back and forth thing and give them some motivation to take upon their day and then let them know where they can go and get tickets right there on the screen. What does it say? It says lesbrowngreatness.com. That's it. One All more right. time. lesbrowngreatness.com. I just got a celebrity endorsement. <laughs> yes. All right. So now giving you three short pencil principles. I said principles. <laughs> <laughs> you should write this down. My, my principles are principles. Okay, yeah. Come on now. <laughs> That's an inside joke. Yeah. Uh, we're, not, we're not going to change that Tola. No, 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 not Tola. No, 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 no. So when Dad says something during his speech that, that is really good, I'm just going to say, whoo. Yeah, <laughs> you can say Tola. Yes, yes. <laughs> the Nigerian prince. Yeah. Yes, go ahead. Yes. So. Right now, if you're, you're feeling the content, if you would like to be a part of this, make sure you put greatness in the comment section right now. If you know you want to be a part of this, make sure you go to lessbrowngreatness.com. This message is sponsored by Hotmart. 
and trust up. So let's go into just a little taste of what they're going to get today. You want to start us off? Absolutely. All right. I, I want sure. you to think about your goals and dreams. What is it you, you want to do with your life? Particularly now, because what we know is the life is fragile. I was planning not to come out till 2027. And then somebody whispered in my ear called life. Who said you're going to be here in 2027? I know you want to be. Uh, did you remember Michael Jackson? They spent millions of dollars saying this is it. That was it. But it was not the it they had in mind. Mm -hmm. Only put off for tomorrow the things that you don't mind dying in you today. Wow. And I said, I got to come out. I, you know, I've been in so long. I've been talking to squirrels. even have a squirrel friend who's taught me squirrely. I was a kid. Which said, right then in squirrely, I'm so glad to be here. And talk to you about focusing. Because in order to make it now, with all the distractions that's going on, that you have to focus. You have to make a conscious, deliberate, determined effort. A lot of people are focused on entertainment. A lot of people have checked out. A lot of people are snapping, having meltdowns in traffic, road rage, in grocery stores, arguing about toilet paper or Family members arguing in, in the bedroom about their relationship, waking up in the morning and said, you know what? I don't want to do life with you anymore. Mm -mm. I feel lonely whenever you are around. I'm out of here. And so as we look at ourselves, look at our goals and dreams, the, the, one of the most important things we have to do is focus on what gives you a sense of peace. I, I've been ending relationships that don't bring value to me and that are not peaceful. See, I've come to know that you don't have to help life bring drama. Life will traumatize you by itself. You don't have to augment and complement the process. But there are people who have a propensity for drama. And any little thing can take them and tilt the needle in that direction. No, this is the time you want to focus on peace. If you don't have a peaceful state of mind, if you don't pour into yourself a person that don't have a that don't have a sense of peace, they're subject to snap at any time. That's why we're seeing unexplained violence. We we see people that's making dumb, stupid decisions that cause them. To, to throw their lives away because of the decisions they make. When anger goes up, ignorance increases and intelligent thinking goes down. And so this is a time that you want to focus on peace yeah. and then you want to focus on this question. Am I on course? Is this the best way for me to live my life right now? And you want to focus on your relationships and ask the question, what is this relationship doing to me? Is it an asset or a liability? Is it bringing out the best of me? Is it holding me accountable? Is it creating the next greatest version of myself? Do I feel good when this person is around me? I have a friend that I, I was telling her, I said, tell me how you feel when your husband comes near you. And, and she called me, she said, she said, I, I, I feel threatened and uncomfortable. I said, you need to get out of there. I said, that's unhealthy. She'd been having a cervical cancer surgery for several years. After she left him, she didn't have any more. There are people who can make you sick. You know, you say, you make me sick? That's real. There's a book I read called Who's the Matter with Me? So you want to focus on the relationships. You want to focus on the environment. Because environment, it, it can determine how you feel about yourself and how you see the world. So I'm saying to you, at this point in time, focus on that which is positive, that can give you a sense of optimism. Focus on the relationships that can empower you, that can hold you accountable. Focus on your strength so that in the, in the, in the events that are going on right now, so you can turn those adversities into your creativity and your advantage. You, you have greatness in you. And you have to be hungry for greatness. 
It doesn't happen automatically. You have to work hard. You have to make a conscious, deliberate, determined effort. You have the power, authority, and dominion on living life on your terms. I'm just speaking. Focus is important. Yes. What I love about what you said was when you were talking about the distractions. Mm -hmm. Back when you were a kid, how many channels were there on TV? Three. <laughs> you had three distractions. Yes. How many YouTube videos have you watched today? None. You watch 30 YouTube videos every morning. Oh, I thought the news how many channels. Oh, yeah. yeah you don't yeah, watch yeah. TV. No, I know. You, you don't, don't have a television. Know. Yeah, yeah. We I don't watch TV in the no, no. You know why? Because, because you we're... look at what you tune into, what you listen to, you turn, turn into. In. All right? Yeah, yeah. You know what you listen to, what you watch, you, you turn, turn into. into. Yes. Yes, sir. Yes. And what has happened as time has grown, as new technologies emerge, guess what? It becomes tougher and tougher to have focus. Yes. So that is right. You need to focus on your dream. That's why we're inviting you to New York on August 14th, if you're going to be there. You need to focus on your family. That's why this is a family affair. If you want to be a part of the first family of motivation, our first event since the pandemic. And here's something that's important. You need to focus more on your destiny than you are to your distraction. That's real. You know what happens when you focus? What? You tune out the world around you mm -hmm. and you start to identify something. You get laser focus, as Miss Lisa Nichols would say, and then after focus comes faith. Oh, yes. Yes. Faith, faith. Faith stands for what, Dad? Finding, Finding answers, answers in the heart. Yes. yes. What does it mean? Why are you going to focus? Because it's hard to make it today if you don't know how to take control of your own mind. And that's what Les Brown's going to help you to do at the Hungry for Greatness event. How to reclaim your power so that you can tap into the power of faith. How do you become the number one motivator in the world? How do you have millions of fans, not because of how you shoot a ball or how you dribble or, or, or how fast you drive or any type of athlete, but because your words help them to believe in themselves and change lives. And change lives. You know what, Dad? Mm -hmm. Right now? Coming out of a pandemic when the suicide rate has risen over 14%, when in the military over 50%, in the military over 50%, when you could turn on almost any channel and see death and disruption and war and misogyny, it's very rare that you can be a part of an event that boosts your faith. Talk to people about why they need to have faith in themselves. If you want to achieve your goals, you have to see the value of making a conscious, deliberate, determined effort to feed your faith, as Creflo Dollar would say, and allow your doubts to starve to death. When you look at where we are right now, that most people have lost themselves. This is a time to keep your commitment to your faith in your faith. Mm, hold on. Say that one more time. Dad. Keep your commitment to your faith in, in your, your faith. faith. Look at this question right yeah. here. How can I risk establishing my own business without support from others? Guess what it's going to take? Faith. <laughs> yeah. You do what you can do, and God will do what, what you, you can, can do. do. Come I on started now. with nothing. Hello? No money. No four-color brochure. Don't have any MBA. Labeled educable mental retarded. Born in an abandoned building on a floor. Foster kid. Adopted. I, I, I have this dream of buying my mother a home. I never did that before. There's a reason we're taught to walk by faith and not by sight. We are re there's a reason we're taught yeah. to call forth those things that be not as though they were. Those aren't just words printed on a page. Then we have to demonstrate that. We got to make 
our prayers equal to our performance. Whoa. And a lot of people are throwing in the towel. A lot of people are giving up. And, and as we look at ourselves, that, that, that faith, it drives us. Faith not tested can't be trusted. It doesn't mean that things aren't going to happen to you. You can tithe. You can speak in tongues. And life will still kick your butt. <laughs> the messenger of misery will still come to your house and say, get me some coffee <laughs> and a newspaper. Because I'm going to be here for a minute watching Netflix. I'm going to make your life a living hell. <laughs> That's the part of the process, but I'll be good. I'll be saying my dad, yeah. Now come over here so I can get against this map here. <laughs> right. <laughs> That's so true. And you know what's important sometimes, Dad? What? We have to be real. Everyone doesn't have faith. Yeah. And sometimes you can go through things that force you to lose your faith. But I know for me, when I lost my faith in myself, my dad's faith in me kicked in. You know why faith is powerful? Why? Faith isn't just for you. No. It's for others. Well, well I in question. I, and, and you know that what we're doing now? What? One of my children just said, I want to work with you. I've seen this for several years, and he was judging the possibilities of what I can do based upon my past failures, mm. based upon the fact that I was diagnosed with fourth stage cancer. And I'm glad some things happen to you, some things happen for you. I said, you don't know me like that. Come on, now. You know I'm coming. You're Listen, coming. come here. So come here. I have you a... don't know me like that. Don't write me off because I'm 77. Don't write me off because I've had some failures and disappoint disappointments and, 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 and setbacks in the past. Don't write me off because somebody with a stethoscope around their neck talking about how long I got to be here. I like one of our, our members. And our hunger to speak group said, you be the doctor. I'll let God be the timekeeper. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> so so this, is, this is an important, important distinction. Yes. There are different types of faith. Yes. One type of faith is the faith that you have in yourself, mm -hmm. the faith that you have in your dreams, your yes. future, right? Yes. Another type of faith is the faith that others have in you that make you stronger. That that the other type yeah. of faith. That but there's another. There's another. That there's another one. What's there's that? another one. What's that? It's a faith that you hold on to even when what you want does not happen when you want it to happen. You know mm. that your brother Calvin, mm. without talking to me, went on a search for his grandmother and grandfather. And you know he discovered that my birth mother and birth father were born in Gainesville, Georgia. And I saw for the first time, for the first time, their pictures. For the first time, I heard an audio program that one of my cousins played for me, Tiffany. And I heard my birth mother's voice giving a poem, Dorothy Bell Rucker, my birth mother, she, she was a motivational speaker. You, 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 know, you can't make this up. Beulah Rucker out of Gainesville, Georgia, and they got a museum. She was a motivational speaker. Dorothy Bell gave me life, but Mamie Brown taught me how to live life, to be unstoppable, to have the faith to call forth those things that be not as though they were. And so we're having this event. And this is not for everybody. This is for people that can hear our voices in their heart. Now, if, if, if we had a lineup with comedians and entertainers, oh, you couldn't get in the place. But when you're talking about creating a new life, the road to life is straight and narrow, and few there be that find it. I was on an airplane, John Wesley. And I was shocked that over half the plane, everybody was dressed in white. 
So I asked a young lady, I said, why are you all dressed in white? Oh, we have a group that we have white parties. I said, and? What do you mean by that? Oh, we fly cross country and we have dances and entertainment. And we're all dressed in white. Mm -hmm. People get on a plane and fly around the country in white for entertainment. Yeah. But that same group of people, I guarantee you, would not spend a nickel to fly to a place to invest in themselves to create a new life for themselves at a time where over 47 million jobs have been lost due to artificial intelligence, at a time when people who have lost their jobs because of the pandemic, mm -hmm. those jobs are not coming back. Okay. At, a, at the time, mm -hmm. millions of people are, are cringing in fear and waiting on a stimulus check that won't stimulate anything or anybody. At a time when people are desperate and looking for something else and that they will let go on their jobs and they're now being called, come back. And they say, no, 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 no. I don't want to come back. I don't want to do that anymore. Right. Can you tag me? Come on. Tag yes. Me. That's us. That says, you know what says more about them than the clothes they're wearing? What? What they're focused on. Yes. You know what they're focused on? Having a good time. Yes. You know what they're focused on? Taking good selfies. Yes. You know what they're focused on? Getting away from their job so they can go somewhere and they don't have to think and don't have to be challenged and don't have to wake up early and don't have to go to sleep late and don't have to be held accountable for their actions and having somebody monitor their behavior. But I challenge you on this. If they had the focus and the faith to market to those people, to fill up a plane with people wearing white or purple or pink or whatever, what gives us the right not to make this event Hungry for Greatness with Les Brown, filled up with people coming in from all around the world, all around New York, all around D.C., from all from Philly, from California. People are coming in from Amsterdam, from London, from Europe to be here. Why? Because this is for your faith. Yes, yes. This and, is for your faith. And, and faith is something that that we know with our works is dead. Mm -hmm. And you got to do the internal work and the external work. You've got to be willing to work on yourself now. This is a different landscape. Yeah. Who you've been in the past, you got to make a radical change. This is a different space. I remember the time somebody sneezed, I was on the elevator with a guy and he had his mask on. And so he started, <laughs> And he took his mask off and sneezed. Achoo! And I'm looking at him. And you about to make me lose my mind up in here. <laughs> up in here. You don't put that mask on. I'm about to make me lose my religion up in here. Uh, were you up meeting him up with your eyebrows? I was. Your eyebrows. I was oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so listen, let's do, let's, you know what's changed off of that? What? Music. When you grew up, what was the rap? You mean the rap that I used to do? No, no. Just what was the rap? Did rapping exist when you grew up? No. Okay. <laughs> no. It did not exist. A rap was a jail record. <laughs> a what? A rap was a jail yeah, record? Yeah, that was your rap. Oh, my God. What's the rap they put on you? <laughs> what did you do? <laughs> what crime did you create? You know what y'all call it today? Oh, I caught a case. <laughs> I just say, well, who threw it to you? Right. No, you broke in somebody's house. That's what happened. So you caught a case. Yes. <laughs> now, this is interesting because everyone has their story and their journey. Yeah. And part of my story is I noticed as I was growing up, I noticed that young people were tuned in more to rappers than they were thought leaders and motivators. And I decided to actually put motivational principles in hip hop form. Yeah. And one of the songs that I put together was called Follow Your Heart. And if you're loving this conversation with Mamie Brown's baby boy, Mamie Brown's grandbaby boy, right now, I'm going to teach you how to rap before we go on to our third point. Are you ready? 
You gonna teach me how to rap? I'm gonna teach you how to rap. I have my own rap. L B Triple T, Les Prime, Flatter Play and Papa. There were none before me, and there will be none after me. Therefore, that makes me the one and only. Young and single would love to make you certified, bona fide, and doubly qualified to bring you satisfaction and a whole lot of action. What's wrong with that? What's wrong when I was in elementary school and young ladies, young girls would ask me, where do they call you Mr. Vocabulary? And I said, because linguistically or orationally, I'm emphatic that I possess an ad infinitum etymology, which is simply incarcable. However, I want to be like Columbus. I, will, I believe in the simplicity of life, and I want to discover you. Boom! Mm. <laughs> yeah, come on! You think y'all just came up with rap? Oh, that'd be a break. The only problem with that is you have to do more than one rap, okay? <laughs> we got to teach you some more rap. This okay. rap is about faith. Can I you want turn you to turn that on here because I'm having a hard time. Are you shining already? Please. Where are you going? It's bro. over there. It's right over there. Yeah, go Where right there. Where are staff members when you need them? I don't know. I don't know. Let me share something with you. Life is for living. Most people are not living. They're existing. And, and the reason that this is not for everybody, this is for people who say, I don't want to exist. The reason that millions of people are calling in on, in, a, in a market where we see signs everywhere, help wanted, and, and one Burger King place said they had a sign on the Burger King outside said, we quit. <laughs> <laughs> when they told me selling hamburgers, all right? They said, we quit. We resign, all of us. People quitting in the middle of the day. Reason is, they want to leave a job that's not them. I got it, I got it. Oh, 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 oh. Okay, help me out. You're having a power, sir. Yes, I'm having a power. This is what happens when you get zipped and zipped. All right. All right. Yes. Okay, so let me tell you something. All right. Focus is about taking charge of your mind. Yes. Faith is about taking charge of your heart. (laughs) Come on, Doc. Come Go on, on. Go the back mind the believes, but the heart knows. Ye shall know the truth, and, and the truth shall set, set you free. free. Come to New York. The truth is, when you come, your life will be changed. Come on. When you come, you want to bring other positive, motivated people with you that's going in the direction of where you are going. When you come, mm. we will allow you to come into an environment where you will have social distancing from the negative, toxic people who don't have goals who don't have dreams, who are volunteer victims. When you come, you have to begin to serve notice to all the toxic, negative behavior in your life so you can make room for the greatness that you have within you to live the life that you were chosen to live. When you come, be ready to say goodbye to yourself. Kiss that person you've been up to this point. Goodbye, because (laughs) you will understand what Paul meant when he said, I must die deadly because now, mwah, goodbye, because that will give birth to the greatness that you have with it. Mwah, goodbye yeah. when you come to the Rock Church. Oh, yes, yeah, somebody can hear me right now. Well, when you come on August the 14th, I want you to direct messengers right now. Tell them how they get their tickets right now. Put, it's selling out fast. It it's is. selling out fast. Put, and we'll send you a link so that you can be a part of this event. And let me tell you what it else what else is important. First you have focus. Yes. Then you have faith. Yes. And then you have follow through. Mm-hmm. You see, I believe that if you could turn on the radio and learn how to be a thug, you should be able to turn on the radio and learn how to be a thinker. And that's why I need you to do this rap with me because I'm ready to follow through. Now, I need you to do the hook. Okay, and, and the reason, let me tell you the, that? the reason I've been kind of slow is because rap created what I believe is HIV, another virus, hood infected virus, AIDS, addiction to incarceration, and, and death, death syndrome. syndrome. All right, every week when I'm being killed, how about we got a beef? We can't even <laughs> afford a pork chop. Hello, somebody. Wow. <laughs> Y'all know it's true, Vicky. Come on, it's changed. I'm calling.
culture. This I is, mean, this yeah. is true. I mean, this you is. see people walk around, won't pull their pants up. Won't pull their pants up. Who does that? Won't pull. What does it take to pull you? Who stands in the mirror and pull the pants out so people can see your underwear? What's up with that? Or oh, maybe I'm old-fashioned. Well, let me be old-fashioned, but you ain't going to see my underwear. No. That, that that shows no gumption. You know what that reminds me of? Frederick Douglass said, say, well, how why help a man stand to his feet? If he doesn't have enough gumption to lock his knees and pull his pants up, when you let him go, his head is going to hit the pavement mm -hmm. because there's nothing in there anyhow. Oh, that was a good move. Whoa. Come on. Woo! <laughs> Follow your heart. Say that with me. Wait, next song. Say, follow, follow your, your heart. heart. Okay, let's, let's practice again. Follow your heart. Follow your heart. Okay, and then another zoom. Follow your heart. Follow your heart. All right, good. So these are the words. And then as you, as you get it, say it with me. Follow your heart. Follow your heart. All right, you say it with me this time. Okay. All right, you, you got rid of right? Yeah. Be triple P. One, yeah. two, three. Follow your heart, even if no one's behind you. Follow your heart, just let the spirit guide you. Follow your heart, I hope these words can remind you to follow your heart. If you ever want to find you, follow your heart. Now, I've never been a follower till I decided not to be a fried swallower. Because I take pride in being my best. And know sometimes I think it's right, keep leading me left. Follow your heart. Follow your heart. And your mistakes will be the same as mine. We can't always find the answers in our brain. The sign is when you have those feelings that you can't explain. You know what it means, but let me tell you why it came. Follow your heart, even if no one's behind you. Follow your heart. Just let the spirit guide you. Follow your heart. I hope these words can remind you to follow your heart. <laughs> if you ever want to find you, yes, yes, yes. First, you have to focus. Focus on your dream. Focus on where you're going, not where you are. Focus on the type of relationships that are going to help you to grow and expand and don't get stuck in a rut. Focus is important, but focus happens and is truly ignited when you have faith and follow your heart and let the record show. There will be disappointments. You're going to have setbacks. You will fail your way to success. People will reject you. People will disappoint you. People will talk about you. But when you follow your heart, there's a difference when you work on a job. And when you work on a job, that's what you get paid for. But when you follow the calling on your heart, on, oh, that's what you're made for. Yes. Follow your heart. Some of you right now are going to lessbrowngreatness.com. Some of you right now are moving around your schedule because your heart says that you need to be with the Brown family. Your heart says, hey, I've been listening to Les Brown on YouTube. I, I, I've been trying to find out how I can meet him. Now I get a chance to get a VIP ticket and to have dinner with Les Brown and ask him some questions about my goal and my dream. Now I have an opportunity to be in the room with one of my heroes. Dad, you are just my dad. You didn't just give birth to me. You are my hero because you built our family business by focusing, by having faith, and by following your heart. Yes, follow your heart because there your treasure is also. Follow your heart because you were made for greatness. Follow your, your heart. heart. You were chosen out of 400 billion sperm. Follow, Follow your, your heart. heart. You were born to win. Follow, Follow your, your heart. heart. You are a masterpiece because you're a piece of the master. Follow, Follow your, your heart. heart to New York at the Rock. <laughs> August 14th, we're going to have an incredible experience. Mm. Let's, do the, let's do the face for a bit. The yeah. face, you know the face. Yeah. <laughs> That's the face when your mind is telling you one thing and your heart is telling you another. And you choose to follow your heart. Make yeah. the decision right now. Join us. We're only a few weeks out, and there are still an opportunity for you to meet the one, the only, my dad, Les Brown. Follow your heart. Follow your heart. Bye for now. <laughs>